What's up guys, it's Lee here, the bartending photo boothing rental guy. And today we're talking about the hidden money that you charge inside rentals and why it's a necessity. Whoa. <laughs> oh, this is going to be great. Whoever set that one up, you're in big trouble, mister. Okay, let's face it. If you tell your customer that you want a cleaning charge, want a damage charge, uh, a step charge, an elevator charge, whatever charge that it may be, they're probably going to look at the next company and say, hey, this company, they may be a little more expensive, but they don't have as many crazy charges. So in this case, you have to hide the charges because the customer doesn't think about all the extras that the company has to go through to get the job done. You can only run your business so long by doing people all these extra favors uh, without having to bleed money, especially uh, when you get to the point where staff is doing these jobs and you're not doing everything yourself anymore. These dollars count when you're hiring one, two, three guys at 20, 25, who knows how much uh, dollars that you're hiring them per hour, uh, not to mention gas, vehicle running. So the processes have to be cut straight. But at the end of the day, if there's clients shopping around, they don't understand this. They just understand the lowest price. So you have to be not exactly a little bit sneaky, but you definitely have to hide your uh, prices. If you do a lot of corporate clients, it's a little bit different this way. Uh, they understand that there's, you know, costs included. They don't care. They just want to make sure the job is done good. But if there is people who are looking for the best price, well, they're going to be looking at all these things. So you have to give them less and less to look at so that you can just get the booking under your belt. This isn't sneaky. It may seem like it's sneaky, but it's really not. In my business, when I offer delivery, I say, you know, it's $3 per kilometer, but I put it at a zero charge inside the cart and, you know, we'll get your kilometers later. There's no sense in uh, tacking on a per kilometer charge right when they book and them seeing that extra cost because it's always an easier pill to swallow when the cost comes when the event is closer to the date because they're more willing to spend that money. When they're pre-booking things early, earlier their price fishing you know looking for their best price on the other side of this funny thing is is i'm completely wrong because there is lots of clients who understand the highest price gets you uh the best stuff the best service and but that's just the way the cookie crumbles right if you're here you're probably a diy guy like me bootstrapping it starting from the beginning um so your case might be a lot the same as mine there are people price fishing no matter there are people price fishing party rental dog i'm trying to make a video one thing that i love is i love rpp i charge rpp which is rental protection plan on all of my orders it's an extra 10 percent on top and uh, some of my competitors around me they charge 15 percent, and it's justified you know it's not just if something breaks it's you know a cleaning charge and everything charge we just call it the rpp so that there's you know something that makes sense to call it rpp an extra 10 percent of all your stuff i made over 300 grand so far this year uh 10 on top of that that's 30 grand does 30 grand cover uh all the times i was pissed off and all the times i had to uh clean something a little bit extra and the big pile of broken stuff that i have yes it did thank you rpp charge it because people will pay it i had maybe 10 10 orders opt out of rpp and um, I still didn't charge them for the minimal broken amount of things, but it's okay. Let people opt out of it. If you have those extra 10 people that will opt out of it for the, what, 400 and some orders that I did through the year, not bad. You make a lot of money in cancellations. So if you have it in your contract, when someone cancels, then you get that money, right? A 25% for me, they don't get it back no matter what. If they cancel seven days prior within that seven day period towards the event, we retain we retain 100% of it. It's all in the contract and we make a lot of money. I mean, granted, you know, if people are canceling, we let them rebook a different date uh, with a 25% restocking fee. 
but uh, you know, if they're jerks, then definitely not. So we've retained a lot of money. There's a lot of cancellations. Just this week, someone canceled a red carpet. That's like 75 bucks. Someone canceled eight chairs. That was, I can't remember, 17 bucks. However, that was just this week. The price adds up for cancellations. Cancellations, RPP, those are all costs that you can help retain business. It's expensive for you to operate, so you might as well be grabbing money where you can so that you survive. We're survivors, but we have to do it smart. Play smart in your business. So another thing that I do, because I have bookings that happen instantly online, I use this program called Bookable on my website, but there's lots of them out there. And uh, when people book online, they see the prices pre-tax when they're putting quotes together, right? And then it doesn't show the RPP on there as well. So it gives them inside their head what it costs and it helps leverage the booking quicker. I often, you know, someone will call and, you know, they may be having trouble on the website doing something. So I'll help them put a quote together and they'll be like, yeah, I had a 30 by 40 in my tent. Uh, in my, I had a 30 by 40 in my uh, cart plus some chairs and then when I put it all in and I give them the price they're like hey it was way cheaper on the computer and it's like well you have to factor in tax you have to factor in RPP uh, and all this stuff like I'm transparent with them and they're like oh that makes sense but they're just a little bit broken inside and uh, you know that's a way you can leverage it I take lots of online orders right through my rental program they just come into my phone while I'm sleeping and uh, you know, it's kind of a hidden cost, but not really a hidden cost. That's just the subtotal in the cart. And it gives people, uh, you know, the feeling that their rentals are cheaper, which they need, right? They need that feeling while they're price shopping. Later on, when it's close to their event, they're just like, pay the money because I want the thing. And when they're adding things last minute, then uh, they don't mind paying full price. It's just how the mind works while shopping for rental items that I've known for the past three years, uh, since 2019 that I've been in business. Also having your rentals priced so that they have to put things together can save you a lot of money. You know, people will see the tent without the walls uh, and they pay for the walls separately. Well, the tent looks a lot cheaper without the walls. Another thing that I have noticed, this is a, uh, if you have an online shopping on your website, there'll be certain items that people will want to rent, but you don't wanna rent those items to those people, but you still want them on your website. Uh, lots of people have come to me for stage skirting and uh, so I've got the prices for stage skirting just jacked way up because I don't want anyone to rent it because uh, I only want it to go out with the stage. So when I put it inside the packages with the stage, I've got it at way lower price, but the skirting alone way high price so they don't even rent it. Uh, also tent weights. I had tent weights separately on the website and people were just uh, renting the tent weights and uh, putting them on their own cheap little tents. And so I kiboshed that right away. You, uh, you know, put your tent weights up to seven bucks and people won't touch them and then just jack them way down inside your tent packages. And that also makes perceived value because then they look at the all, all of the items separately and they're like, oh, you know, the weights are this much, it's all this much to put together. Oh, look at the package. That package is so much cheaper, perceived value. <laughs> Pricing strategy. Okay, guys, let's go over pricing strategy. What you do is take a look at your competition and put yourself five cents lower than them. If you're just starting out and you don't have as many items as your competition, you probably can't price your items as high as them. Uh, so think about that. If you have a team of guys, delivery is gonna be a lot more because you have to factor in what it costs to have those guys work all the hours. If you work everything yourself and you're bootstrapping it, you can afford to have delivery a little bit lower because you're eating the cost to get those bookings before you have all that extra staff. Go out and get quotes from other companies pretending to be somebody so that you know that you're pricing your stuff correctly because lots of people price fish. I mean, especially when you're starting out, if you're not a big company that has all these corporate gigs and you have a great website offering things, you're gonna get people price fishing. So if you don't have yourself priced correctly, then uh, you're not gonna get any bookings. If you only have one item, well, people really have to come to you. You have to give a really good price or people don't have any reason to come to you, right? Why would they go rent table linens from one company and then chairs from you unless they're getting some serious savings? That's the only reason why people would rent from multiple companies is because they're price fishing. And if they're price fishing, then you know what kind of clients you're going for, the price fishers. So have the lowest prices, you get the price fishers. And that's not a bad thing because I built my whole company on price fishers. 
Okay, here's one I made a big mistake on, and I continue to make a big mistake on. When you're quoting people that are far away, you're gonna get all those bookings if you're pricing yourself a low for travel and delivery. So I did a, uh, what was it? A 30 by 120 this summer, and it was like four and a half hours away, and I quoted 2,500 on the delivery, which I thought was good, but it really wasn't enough. I broke even on 2,500, plus it took me like, four days to execute the event because my vehicle wasn't big enough. So on the way to the event, uh, I had to make two trips just to get up there. So I took my van and my trailer the day before with a full load. And then the next day I came with uh, my team, my vehicle, and then a van again. And then it took us all day to set up. That was the one that Les came and set up with us. And then going back, I actually rented a moving truck um, because I didn't want to get it all back in two days. I wanted it all back on one day and I only brought me and Jaden to take it down. And you know, it ended up costing me a lot of money. I still made a bundle off that, but I mean, how much stuff could I have got booked out in the meantime? If you, um, you know, if you charge accordingly for those big ones, you can make it worthwhile, but you're probably gonna get your stuff booked out in town uh, and book even more stuff. So you might make more profit from, uh, you know, trying to push away those out of town gigs by quoting them so unreasonably high because you know you're gonna get in town gigs where, uh, you know, you don't have to pay all these guys for driving time. Eight hours of driving time times four people, a lot of hours, a lot of pay. Uh, it eats right into your bottom line when it doesn't have to. Quote accordingly for far out of town gigs. So the takeaway from this short video is charge RPP, a rental protection plan to cover yourself. Um, make sure that the 25% or whatever the percent amount for someone booking, make it non-refundable if they cancel. Because I have had people cancel events and uh, I never was able to recoup the costs. And I wonder, you know, down down the road a little while, I'm like, why didn't I have all my tents booked out for this weekend? Why was it this way? And then I look back at the cancellations. Oh, it's because blah, blah, blah canceled. And it's because, you know, this happened. That stuff doesn't get rebooked out. So take, take that 25%, take that 50%, take whatever that percent is. And uh, that's for you because, uh, you know, they're screwing you whether you don't think of it or not. Uh, sorry about all the growling in the background, mummy left. Uh, this is Party Rental Dog. So uh, I'm the bartending photo boothing rental guy and this is Party Rental Dog. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, you know what to do. Sub to Les's channel, TRB Vlogs. You stay classy.